Pimax were kind enough to loan me their flagship headset, the Crystal, for a while to test and review, after which it'll be returned to them at no personal expense. And today we're putting it through its paces, focusing on some test cases within Digital Combat Simulator DCS, rather than the headset in general. The Crystal is what I consider a true next generation VR headset with foveated rendering tied to the eye tracking, a necessary feature to drive the 288 squared resolution per eye reducing the exponential performance demands of such a high pixel density. Although not without its difficulties, it's shaping up as an impressive headset. The first test is that of the legal eyesight requirement for driving in the UK, reading a license plate at 20 meters. Please note the capture mirror resolution you see is not representative of the headset's picture. And this is admittedly a non-scientific test, so we're here lined up at the correct distance per the sim behind some plates. Pleasantly, I'm able to read them all without any real difficulty, in particular the UK style plates representing the best analogue. Reversing back until only just readable, we get about 26 metres away before it becomes impractical to read, so the Pinax does indeed deliver on eyesight. I'd say, as with all VR headsets, we're still effectively short-sighted. You've also got Zoom VR tools, at least in DCS, but these have always felt as a bit of a crutch. But with its impressive 42 pixels per degree of vision, reading our cockpit lives up to its namesake, crystal clear. Putting this into practical application, formation flying is a breeze. VR grants you depth perception and of course better situational presence. I'll mention I find myself struggling to judge closure distance correctly versus non-VR when joining up, and this owes to the distance resolution, but otherwise you'll easily pick up on all the details once together. In fact, you might remember my mention of the Valve Index review, where you could only, only just read the signal lights under the nose without making use of zoom whilst the crystal renders it very clearly. This is useful as it'll stop you tunnel visioning and keep your depth perception which is otherwise lost when using VR zoom, granting you the ability to fully utilise your peripheral vision which is crucial for good position keeping. Hooking up with a tanker has never been easier, I don't feel held back whatsoever. Stress testing, we're going to talk air to ground, in this environment you really must make use of VR zoom if you're looking out the window. Whilst I've surprised myself with the ability to occasionally spot things without it, you really will struggle versus zoom available on a desktop. Objects bleed into the terrain a little, and details like traces can flare up and disappear suddenly. This is a result of the foveated rendering in action, competing with the sim's own resolution scanning for visibility when not directly looking at something. Whilst not the headset's fault, as DCS and many other programs will have to learn to support dynamic resolutions, it's jarring to see incoming fire suddenly appear and then disappear as you look around. Working the sensors and the view on the MFDs, it's really clear. Though sometimes I feel the need to step the zoom in for close inspection on difficult pictures. As before, any cockpit work is perfect, no screen door or visibility issues, the HUDs and helmet sights all come in clean, clear and easy to read. This is true even in the cockpits like the F-16 which have a very small display. VR always makes for an exciting time, down low, flying in the hills, trees and avoiding fire, an experience totally unmatched by a monitor. Running a few laps around the boat, carrier ops are another test of our eyesight. Spotting the deck and pattern work is a pleasure, sadly it's really not practical yet to look at the board on deck directly as you're entering the groove. I find myself totally relying on the visual pop-up until we get in close. Simply because using VR zoom is so disorientating on approach it induces more mistakes to use it, which is a shame as I would love to ditch that overlay. You can make out the ball, but we're at the limits of our vision initially. Night flying is where things get a little tricky. The first issue is everything dark will have a grey overtone. The QLED display makes use of local dimming via mini LED backlighting, which does help increase the vibrancy within the display and allows the dimming of the backlight in darker areas, which is an improvement over LCD panels. However, I'm not terribly impressed by this. It's no replacement for true black colours as you might find on an OLED panel, although this is admittedly a rather rare feature in VR. Otherwise, I'd found no issues with the lens glare off of bright objects within the cockpit. The second issue is again down to the foveated rendering. I cannot demonstrate this visually on a mirror sadly, but in effect, the brightness of the landing lights appear to suddenly change quite significantly. Looking away, they'd be lit up strong, big and blocky. Looking at it, they'd suddenly dim to less than half the size. Ultimately, you can combat this by increasing the resolution scale outside of your eye tract area, but at the expense of performance. Again, this is a rendering issue, less so the headset's fault. 
Getting back into combat for our final test. Once again, I've always struggled with viewing distant aircraft, being unable to discern type or aspect without making use of the zoom, which is an issue that's had me surprised and shot down when I thought an aircraft was much further away. Flying Cold War, limited aircraft, you will be at a disadvantage in the longer distance visual engagements, at least without a radar to assist your eyesight or the use of VR zoom. Modern jets, you can easily work around these deficiencies, of course. Once merged though, it's far easier than I've ever experienced in VR. While still useful to zoom, you can, most of the time, read the aspect and pick out the details on your opponent. The field of view is strong here too. If you've ever used a narrow headset like the Vive or Quest, you would find yourself turning nearly totally around in the seat, or looking directly up to track which strains your neck. The crystal, whilst not outstanding, is wider than the average headset. The vertical will allow you to flick your eyes down to instruments, or back up and follow an aircraft above the canopy bow with no trouble, and the width means you can just about corner of the eye look behind you without having to turn totally around. It's still restrictive versus reality, but unlike the aforementioned headsets, it does save your neck some strain. The nose bridge also does a fantastic job of avoiding overspill from one eye to the other, preventing double vision and light leak. You've got edge-to-edge -edge clarity on the displays, and you'll sometimes catch the foveated rendering falling a frame behind your vision, but it's well worth the trade-off for the performance. Although I have noticed some slight visual distortion to objects as you rotate your head around, filling the size of things warp a small amount. Although I can't quite figure out if this is the lenses or the in-game representation of field of view that's causing us issues. Weight and heat are a little bit of a concern. It's a big headset, featuring a large facial contact pad. Whilst I've not had any significant comfort problems, even over longer sessions, you do feel the weight, which requires you to strap it on tight to prevent it slipping, and heat builds up on your face. Especially in a hot room, given there's no way for your face to breathe being so sealed in with the displays. Pimax do offer a comfort top strap, which should help alleviate some of these concerns, but it's an extra expense over the base model, and sadly not something I've gotten to try out. Upcoming of a review in editing, which will be more focused to the headset itself and how it is to use in general, highlighting some of its issues and just what it's like to live with on a more practical level. Linked below you'll find a store discount code and affiliate link if you're interested, but I'd recommend holding off for my review further down the line. If you've any questions, they are more than welcome below. And I'd like to give a short thanks to FUD from VR4DCS.com, whose incredible resources have helped me both get set up and got me in touch with Pimax. Hope you've enjoyed, and take care.